Hello friends. So continuing my presentations for the GI topics, I'm going to talk a bit about hepatocellular carcinoma today. So let's start our presentation. So hepatocellular carcinoma, this is the third most common cause of cancer worldwide and uh, chronic hepatitis B is actually most common cause of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma worldwide while the chronic hepatitis C being the most common cause in Europe. So the moving, moving on, the main risk factor for developing hepatocellular carcinoma is cirrhosis and this is most, mostly because of the hepatitis B and C. Other causes include alcohol, hemochromatosis and primary biliary cirrhosis which is now known as primary biliary cholangitis. Other risk factors, well, it can happen with uh, alpha-1 angiotrypsin deficiency, others are hereditary ty tyrosinosis, glycogen storage disease, aflatoxin, and really because of drugs like oral contraceptive pill, anabolic steroids can be because of the conditions like porphyria cutanea tarda, these are the risk factors, male sex, diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. But remember the main, main, main one are the viral hepatitis B and C, alcohol, hemochromatosis and primary biliary cirrhosis. So let's talk a bit about, about the features. Well, they really tend to present late. Um, features of liver cirrhosis or failure may be seen. A patient can present with jaundice, ascites, right upper quadrant pain, maybe have hepatomegaly, pruritus, maybe have splenomegaly. Possible presentation is decompensation in a patient with chronic liver disease or sometimes there is only raised alpha fetoprotein. Screening with ultrasound with or, the, with or without alpha fetoprotein it should be considered for high risk groups so like patients with liver cirrhosis secondary to hepatitis B and C or hemochromatosis and also and with liver cirrhosis secondary to alcohol. So these are the specific groups where the screening is needed uh, which can be done either with ultrasound with or without the alpha fetoprotein and normally the screening is done annually actually. So, talking about the management option, if this you found early disease, then it's surgical resection. Some of the patients can be managed with a liver transplant, radiofrequency ablation, transarterial chemoembolization, and there is a specific drug called sorafenib, and this is a multi uh, kinase inhibitor. So. I like to talk a bit more about the management uh, for the hepatocellular carcinoma. So hepatocellular carcinoma it should be managed according to the Barcelona classification for liver cancer treatment system. So in this Barcelona classification actually they look for the size of the tumor and the number of tumor, how many tumors we have. Now patients with child, child poo A cirrhosis, then there is no signs of portal hypertension and who have single lesion, single lesion and less than 2 cm in size, they should be treated with surgical resection. So remember child poo A cirrhosis, this is a mild one, single lesion less than 2 cm, we go for surgical resection. Other group of patients with child poo A and B cirrhosis and the patient who have two to three tumors, less than three centimeter or one tumor less than five centimeter. And the other condition is should not be having any vascular invasion or extra hepatic spread, they can be considered for liver transplantation. So liver transplantation according to Barcelona classification only will be done if the lesion, single lesion is less than 5 cm and if there are 2 to 3 tumors less than 3 cm 
and there should not be any extra hepatic spread. So as a bridge to liver transplantation, these patients can be treated with TAC or RFA. Now, other set of patients who have child A or B cirrhosis and they have good performance status, but there is an evidence of vascular uh, lymphatic or extra hepatic spread. So in this, in this group, the multiple tyrosine kinase inhibitor called sorafenib has been shown to prolong survival. And finally, the patients who are quite ill with child poo C cirrhosis have hand strain liver disease. So they are poor candidate for therapy because they lack any hepatic functional reserve to tolerate either resection, TAC or RFA, RFA. The liver transplant is out of questions in these patients um, because the it is already spread. So the tumor is already spread or metastasized to other parts. So these are the group of patients which are best treated symptomatically and we should involve community and hospital palliative cream teams should be considered. So thanks a lot guys. This was the uh, presentation for the hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, see you till my next presentation.